reweaving with the original color. You have to use cotton and you dye the cotton. In 2005, just five weeks before losing his battle with cancer, Rogers prepared to publish his last academic paper. He wasn't casting doubt on the science of carbon dating, but the selection of a contaminated sample from the damaged corner of the shroud. In his opinion, the carbon dating tests didn't reveal its true age. But one fateful decision was about to threaten Ray Rogers' last hope of carrying out a new carbon dating test. By 2005, the scientific mainstream thought they'd laid the mystery of the Turin Shroud to rest. It was a fake, dated between 1260 and 1390. But scientist Ray Rogers had found new evidence suggesting the carbon dating sample was contaminated. I'm coming to the conclusion that it has a very good chance of being the piece of cloth that was used to bury the historic Jesus. He writes a paper that's accepted for publication in Thermochemica Acta, January of 2005. And that paper is the only peer-reviewed science that challenges the carbon date with anything credible up until that point in time. Rogers knew that his findings needed to be tested with more sophisticated equipment. So he contacted a colleague who still worked at Los Alamos Laboratory, Bob Villarreal. It was a race uh, for him because he knew he was dying. He wanted to know, is this corner of the shroud of the same composition, whether it was flax or linen or cotton? If it was cotton, it's not the same as the main shroud cloth, which is linen. Rogers would never live to discover the answer. He lost his long battle with cancer on the 8th of March, 2005. He was 78 years old. After Ray's death, Bob Villarreal was determined to honor his promise. He passed the fibers to a specialist, and something remarkable happened. I received a call from him, and he said, the thread that I was going to analyze broke into two pieces. Is God going to be mad at me? <laughs> Just as Rogers suspected, the threads appeared to be two pieces of cotton and linen woven together. In 2008, the findings were announced to the world. They supported the theory that the carbon dating sample was poorly chosen, as Rogers suggested in his final interview. They come in and they snip, 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 snip in secret and take the worst possible sample they could. The people who certified the sample are still trying to convince everybody that everybody else is wrong. They're right. Those were perfectly valid samples. Before he died, Rogers was a strong advocate for a new carbon dating test. Even if the age-old issue of access could be solved, there was now a much bigger problem. The methods used to preserve the delicate shroud. Back in 2002, microscopic bugs were found in the display case, so the church authorities treated the container. Ray Rogers talked about the fact that the box in which the shroud was kept, the reliquary, was treated with thymol, which is a chemical that kills anything alive, bugs, anything, bacteria. That treatment of thymol could impact future carbon dating of the cloth. By using a plant-based chemical called thymol to clean the container, they inadvertently contaminated the shroud. Introducing modern carbon atoms now made it virtually impossible to date. However, in his final interview, Rogers proposed an ingenious solution. 
The shroud was damaged by fire in 1532, leaving 16 burn marks where samples could be taken. And because they were pure carbon, they could be cleaned of modern impurities. You got carbon there that's been charred since 1532, and charred cloth is, is very impervious to any kind of attack. So it makes a real good dating sample. Today, the technology exists to retest the shroud, and the samples have already been taken from the cloth. In 2002, they removed the backing cloth, they removed all of these patches. You see like this charred area here? She snipped off the charred area from around these burnt holes, and they saved that. That's prime stuff. You could date that. These charred fragments of linen might hold the key to finally solving the mystery of the Shroud of Turin. First, the church must agree to release the samples for a second carbon dating test. Only then will it be possible to say if the Shroud is an elaborate fake or the burial cloth of Jesus of Nazareth. For now, it seems certain that the scientific debate of the Turin Shroud will go on. If it isn't old enough to be the Shroud of Jesus, then I feel I will have witnessed a miracle because some medieval guy then will have created something that we can't even duplicate, nor can we fully explain, and I'd like to know how that was done. Next on 4, using amateur footage, stories of courage, survival and heartbreaking loss. Tsunami caught on camera.